Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode I show you how to make a Vertorama. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Romilly. I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris, France, and I make two tutorials per week. Click here if you want to get the raw files of this episode, and click here if you want to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In last episode, I showed you how to play with car light streaks to make this photo a pretty cool trick. This week, I'm going to show you how to make a Vertorama. What is a Vertorama? A Vertorama is like a panorama, but instead of going from left to right, we're going to go from up and down. It's very similar, but it enables you to take things you would not be able to do otherwise. Let me show you how. Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to talk about Vertoramas. Now, to get these two roll files, which were shot with a Sony A7R, and they are a bit underexposed, but on purpose, so it's pretty nice files. All you have to do is go to my website, photosearch.com, and you have to go to news, sign up, and there you can sign up with your name and your email to my newsletters, and you will get a special page where you will, where you will be able to download these raw files. Okay, so um, I shot this, now this is something I've been trying to shoot for a while because it's a, it's a very nice monument close to the Châtelet in Paris, which is like in the center but it's, it's very high up. The thing is, I've tried to shut this before with a wide angle lens, but it looked very small. So then I came with this idea of, instead of taking one photo with a wide angle lens, I wanted to shoot it with a 35 millimeter, two photos, one, two. And this is something you're gonna have a lot if you're like, try to shoot inside of a church, try to shoot inside of a very tall buildings. For example, in New York, uh, I use that technique a lot to shoot the buildings because they're just so tall. So anything which is tall. Okay, so two photos, and I'm gonna try to make these two photos into one. Now, if you notice, I shot this by hand. I was at 1 60th of a second, which is usually the lowest I go when I shoot this by hand. I was too lazy to pull out my tripod, so, ISO was 208.80. Now I underexpose this photo a lot because this is my technique uh, to not do HDR and still get all the details in the sky because the sky was amazing. Check this out, really nice sky in Paris. That was a couple of nights ago. So Vertoramas. First, I'm gonna retouch the first photo. I'm gonna put up the shadows now, check that out. Now this does not work on every DSLR because this is a Sony A7R, a very powerful uh, camera. Look at this, there's hardly any noise, even so it was completely underexposed. Now, if I would have shot this with a Canon 5D Mark II, which is my old camera, I would not have underexposed that much because by opening up the shadows, I would have had too much noise. That is one of the good thing about the Nikon D800E or the Sony A7R, this is very high-end DSLR. They have amazing quality in the shadows, okay? But anyways, I would have shot this uh, with a regular DSLR, probably with an exposure like this, you know. So the sky, you still see some textures and you still see something. You have to find, the, the key point to this technique is you have to find the sort of the middle point. Now I'm so used to it that now I just look behind my camera and I know if I've got a right exposure. I don't even look at the histogram. But uh, if you're not sure, you can just try to shoot different exposure. Okay, so now we got this, so I'm, go I'm gonna put the shadows. On this one, I'm gonna bring on the highlights. Okay, let's find a good white balance for this one. So I'm gonna to go to uh, shade and, um, and add some magenta, which is sometimes what I do. Well, in this case, I'm not. Why? Because look at this, there's a lot of blue sky and a lot of red. And I wanna show the contrast between the red and the blue. So in this case, I'm gonna go for daylight. Daylight is gonna make everything blue, but I'm still gonna add a little bit of magenta, a little touch, okay? Because I like to have this blue and I like to have this warm. Um, now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go minus on the clarity. The reason why is because when you do plus 100, minus 100, you're basically doing a, a bit of an HDR look. So as I wanna give it a more natural look, I'm taking the clarity down and not up, okay? Then I'm gonna do my white point, move to the right until I've got a white point and I'm gonna do my black point. Okay, so now we've got a full contrasted photo. Check this out, before, after. <laughs> this camera is amazing. And I'm giving you this raw file so you can see for yourself and the quality that there is. Okay, next, um, let's take care of the noise on this one. So I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna unabout the profiles correction just to take out the vignetting of the photo. And then I'm gonna remove chromatic aberration in case there is any, but this camera is so amazing that 
usually does not give so much chromatic aberration. No, it does not. But okay, I'm still putting it there. And I am not going to use the upright function because when you make panoramas or vertoramas, I advise you not to do that because you're going to get all kinds of troubles that we will correct in Photoshop. Okay, so this one is kind of cool. I might lower the exposure overall. And uh, oh yeah, one thing I didn't do is the noise. Noise is very important. Uh, so noise reduction, there is a bit of noise. It's a bit of noisy. So the best way to look into noise is to look in something which is very dark and the sky at the same time. This is a good place. You can move around your photo here up left on the, using the little square here. And uh, I think I'm just gonna do a little 20 of noise reduction, or maybe not even, 15. And then I do my usual formula, 100 minus 15 is 85. Okay, if you follow my tutorials, you know that's my thing. And then masking, I'm gonna use the masking tool until everything is, everything that I don't want to be sharpened in black. The sky is black, meaning it's not going to get sharpened. Okay, so this is, this is cool. Now that I've done all this work on this one photo, let's do the vertorama. I'm gonna select both photos, click on think, make sure everything is checked and click on synchronize. Of course, the second photo has the exact same exposure, so it looks exactly the same. So that's kind of cool. Now I'm ready to go into Photoshop. So right click, edit, merge, uh, no, sorry, merge to panorama in Photoshop. And uh, I'm gonna click on, um, it's gonna export both of the photo into a TIFF file, open up Photoshop, and I'm gonna use the auto function with just blend image together, which is a default setting. Click on okay. Now it's gonna do its magic and I'm gonna put on pose as it's gonna take probably a minute. All right, so this is the result done by Photoshop. Not bad, but we can improve it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to layers, flatten image, and then I'm gonna duplicate that layer. And I'm gonna go into the filter, uh, adaptive wide angle. Now adaptive wide angle is, works very well on panoramas, but it works also very, very good on vertoramas. Uh, so it's what it does here, you can see it detects that this was shot with the ELCE 7R Sony which is the name for the Sony A7R, FE 35 millimeter, that's my land, 35 millimeter, 2.8. Okay, so now uh, all I'm gonna do is I wanna make this monument a bit more straight. First, I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom out to see it better. And then I'm just gonna click once on the side of the monument and just click and let go of my mouse. And you see this little gray blue thing. I'm gonna make this go the whole way down and then I'm gonna press the shift key, it's gonna become uh, purple, press and click. And this is gonna make this straight. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side. Boom. And now it made all this straight. Okay, but now this is a bit crooked here, at uh, the bottom, so I'm gonna click once. And this time I'm not gonna press the shift key, but I'm just gonna make something like this and something like this also just to make this a little bit uh, less crooked, but I wanted this to be really straight. Okay, then I'm gonna click on okay. And it's and the thing is, at the end of the day, this is gonna be a very high definition file because it is twice 36 million pixels. So it's gonna be a big file, so you can make a big print out of it, which is really cool. Now, I love to use this wide adaptive wide angle just for that, because I wanted to, to show really how beautiful and big this monument is. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off and then I'm going to take the, um, the crop tool here and uh, maybe crop here, crop there. I'm certainly going to maybe yeah, crop here, something like this and crop here. Maybe leave a bit of sky here, leave a bit of sky. Now I need to get the sky back. Well, actually not, you know what? The sky, I could get the sky back, but I don't like the idea that it's too high up. Well, maybe like this. Okay, now if you're missing a bit of sky, that's really easy. Well, you can just, the fastest way, just take the stem tool, make it big. I'll click next to here and just paint some sky. There's many ways of doing it. You can use the content that word fail, but I wanted to show with the stem tool. Okay, so I'm happy with the result and um, well, there is a bit of, uh, there is a bit of uh, stuff which is weird here, so I can press Command-T and then press Command to just shape this a little bit more. I could do it in adaptive wide angle, but I want to do it, I can do it also here like this, just to make that building a bit more straight, you know, and it's, so it's less crooked, something like this. Okay, 
and uh, so you can see this is where we came from this is original this is where we are it's it's still a bit you know there this is leaning a little bit I could do some better job and I could spend more time in that if one in but I just wanted to show you the philosophy of it and I think it's pretty cool so now I'm gonna close this I'm gonna close this save it and it's gonna re-import it into Lightroom and now I'm ready to do a double development because uh, now that we have done the, the, the first uh, merge, we can double develop it, which is really cool. That, mean, that means I can, you know, I think it's still a bit dark in the shadows, so I can reopen up the shadows a little bit, re-bring down a bit the highlights. Uh, on this one, I think I'm gonna make a little crazy sky. So I'm gonna take um, here, so, something like this. I'm gonna make this uh, gradient filter here and lower the opacity a little bit. Something like this, same thing here just to make a, a more dense sky, you know, and why not? Why not take a little brush, uh, put some yellows and some magenta on the brush, make sure flow and density is pretty low and just paint a little bit more color at the bottom here. Okay. And if you think it's too strong or if it's too much on the towel, you can just press the alt key and then your mouse becomes uh, an eraser. And I'm going to erase what I did, just did here on the tower. I just want a bit of colors uh, on the sky. So uh, that, and I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some more gradients here. I wanna darken the bottom of the photo, so I'm making a gradient. Uh, I'm gonna go to exposure, minus the exposure, just on the bottom. If I'm going a bit fast, you should check out some of my Lightroom beginning training, just because some of the people following this podcast are pretty advanced, so it's, this is more an advanced tutorial, but uh, yeah. I want to take the attention off here. So, you know, the eyes goes to the brighter part of the photo. Uh, I think I'm going to make another little adjustment here. So let's just make this a little bit darker at the top of the photo. Okay. And maybe, maybe even vignetting on top of everything to make it even more drama. And now I think uh, that we have the, the grandeur of this monument, which I think is really cool. A very nice place in Paris. So really quick, this was a Vertorama. All right, guys, I hope you like this tutorial. If you have any ideas or suggestions of things you would like me to teach you, well, just leave a comment uh, in the section below. And if you can share this video, it would be amazing. Thank you so much, and I will see you in another episode. Mesdames et messieurs, au revoir.